This is Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. Today, um, it, continuing on with my sort of loom knitting how-to uh, videos, I'm going to show you how to use the granddaddy of all the looms. And this is your Afghan loom. Um, it looks really super complicated and it looks really crazy. And it'll take you <laughs> sometimes sitting there looking at it for a while to figure it out. Essentially what you're doing is you have an afghan folded in half and, and, and as it comes out and when you get it off the loom, it will like, you'll unfold it and it will be a full afghan. But while it's on the loom, it's sort of like it, it's, it comes out, it's like folded in half. And you, you'll understand what I'm talking about as we get going. Most of them will have, mine has a little triangle and it's sort of embossed into the um, plastic and that's your starting point so the difference between like making a sock or a hat is when you're when you're loom knitting those you connect it it's a continuous circle or a continuous rectangle or whatever you're doing it goes around and it's connected the afghan one you will stop and you'll reverse your you won't when you get the triangle is your starting point you go all the way around these, but when you get to the one right next to the triangle, that's where you stop and you'll reverse and go back around. So nothing will be joined in between the, the triangle and the peg next to it. It'll be an, an open spot because that those are going to be both sides of your afghan. So I have picked out this, I like these fun um, variegated sort of... Um, they're, they're, they do a lot of self-patterning when you're doing socks and stuff, but on here they, there won't be much of a pattern. So I'm going to do, this is my primary colors, and then I'm going to do stripes. And I have a bunch of odds and ends balls of yarn that um, are left over from other projects that match this yarn. My first um, stripe is going to form the cuff or the top of the, the blanket um, of the afghan. So what I'm going to do, watching any of these videos, then it's sort of the same premise. I'm going to make a loop for my first one. I'm just going to tie it, make it a little, if it's hard for you to do that, you can put it around a pencil or something. Just make it a little loop. And I'm going to put it over my first peg. Now this is going to be challenging to show you on the video, so I will try as best as I can to get it in here because I have to I usually hold this in my lap and it contours well with your with your thighs or your um, stomach however you want to hold it against yourself because there's this curve on here so it's going to be uh, interesting for me to try to do this flat on here on camera so I got it on my first peg I'm going to wrap my pegs And I absolutely would not start with this as my first project. In fact, I would make sure I probably have tried every other thing before I moved to the afghan. So um, let me get wrapping my pegs around. If you haven't watched any of the other videos, please go back. And I would suggest starting with the hat. I think I did post the sock um, video first. But um, I should have broken that video up into several parts because I just discussed loom knitting at the beginning of that. Um, but I would s watch the beginning of the sock one to talk about if you want to see about the talking about the different kinds of looms. And then go watch the hat one. Make your hat first, then go on to your um, either the scarf or your sock. I would do hat, scarf, sock, and then when you've mastered all those, then I would come and do afghan and just like any loom knitting project if you watch the other ones you're going to make two rows to start with because you have to have two rows of loops to connect one with the other okay so now I've come back to my last peg that is next to my triangle. And if you notice here, my hook in between, I'm not going to join these. This 
And if you accidentally join them, you need, you'll need you have to go all the way back and undo everything. And believe me, it's heartbreaking, and I've had to do it when I was first learning it. It was just a habit. You get used to going, you know, connecting everything. Also, make sure you don't do... I did some of these a little tight. Make sure you don't do them ah, too tight. You'll notice that I'm not going to join them right here. Instead, I'm just going to make another loop around this last peg so I have two loops there and I'm going to start I'm going to reverse my direction I'm going to do my loops all the way back around the loom until I get back to the starting triangle Okay, now I am back to my triangle. I get a firm grip on that. Nothing worse than to do all that wrapping and then let go and it all unwinds. Okay, and I'm going to pull the bottom loop over the top loop. Just like um, other loom knitting projects if you've been reading, watching the other videos. There's grooves on these pegs just like most looms. Reach down, pull the first loop over the top loop. Okay, you get the idea. At this point, um, if you're doing stripes, you can do them any width you want. Mine are going to be whatever this orange ball ends up being, but it's going to be a little bit different because on the top part of it, we're going to make it and we're going to fold it over and we're going to uh, make it secure it like a cup, sort of like um, if you have uh, did the sock and the hat, then you, um, you saw how we did the cup on it. So that's sort of what we're going to be doing um, on this as well. So this orange ball is sort of going to dictate to me what my um, uh, widths of my stripes are going to be. It could be anything you want. You could do little stripes, you could do big stripes, however you want to do it. And then I'm going to be switching, I'm just going to be tying my yarn off and changing to that multicolored yarn. Um, but I'm not going to do that yet. I want my cuff to probably be about three inches wide, about like that when it's finished. So remember, whenever you're doing a cuff, you're going you're gonna to need to double it because you're going to fold it over. So if you want a 3-inch uh, wide cuff at the top, you need to do 6 inches of knitted fabric. Um, so I'm going to do about 6 inches, and then I'm going to fold it over, and I'm going to show you how to make the cuff. Um, and then we will do, um, we will show you, I'll show you how to do the stripes. So here are two um, afghans that I've done. And these, uh, I'm using the same, actually using the same yarn on this one, um, different colors of the s single stripes, but the multicolored yarn will be the same. This is actually my cats have taken this one over, that's why I'm making another one. But uh, you can see the cuff, and this one I only did, uh, it looks like about almost two inches, so I would have knitted four inches and then fold that one over. So um, you can see how the, how I have the different color stripes. I got the yellow and the orange and there's blue and you can see how this um, yarn sort of does its own pattern thing here. It's a little fun. And then here's another one I've done. It's actually my daughter's using like the fuzzier yarn and same thing has a cuff and um, the different stripes. So um, that's what we're going to be working on. We're going to work on this cuff part. Um, at the top, you have a cuff. At the bottom, we have to sort of manufacture a cuff. And we'll get there, and I'll show you how to do that. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go knit um, four to six inches of the knitted fabric, and then I will come back, and I will show you how to fold it over and make the cuff, just in case you need a refresher. If you've done the hat and the sock, then you know how to do it. Um, so I'm going to... Obviously, I don't want to sit here for four hours as I'm knitting this. I mean, you don't want to watch that. So 
I'll go do it and I'll come back. And this video is probably going to be over the course of several days because this is an Afghan and uh, I have a life. I've got four kids. So <laughs> not exactly sitting here doing an Afghan all day long. So, um, hi. Okay, so um, I am ready to make the cuff or the top part. It's like making a cuff on the um, loom on my Afghan. And so I'm going to... Um, Turn the camera down there so you can sort of watch that. Okay, so I'm going to pull up very carefully so I don't want my, um, don't want anything to come off the pegs here, but I'm going to pull up my fabric here. And you can use your, um, hook if you want to. Now remember here, we don't have a joining right here. Let's see if I can get it turned so you can see. So nothing is joined right here. Right in this spot here. So it does not hook together because this is each side when this is unfolded. Remember this is the afghan has been folded in half. So when this comes off the loon and you unfold it, it's going to be a full size afghan. So these are the two sides, and that's why they're not joined together. If you join them together, you're going to have a, uh, I don't know what would happen. I guess you're going to have a big loop. <laughs> so be very careful not to join them together. Okay, so I'm going to um, put my stitches over the pegs. And like I said, if you've done a hat or a sock, which I'm assuming at this point you've worked your way through the less hard projects and you're tackling this one now because you are confident now the we got the it's like a finished edge now that way when it's uh, it won't curl now when we get to the bottom you obviously can only do one finished edge the way the loom is made. So when we get to the bottom of the afghan, what we will do is we will fold it over and we will just sew it together and create our own sort of um, cuff at the end. Otherwise, um, you can not finish it that way, but it will um, curl. Now you can also add fringe to it. Um, if you watch the scarf video, then I showed you how to do fringe. Again, um, fringe not one of my favorite things to do so I rarely add fringe to any kind of afghan. Okay next um, I'm going to go around and it's just like um, just like if you were doing a sock or a hat brim. I'm just going to pull loops over After I get done with the, doing the cuff or the top edge of the blanket afghan, I'm going to just keep on um, knitting with the orange until it runs out, and then I'll switch to the variegated or the self-patterning or whatever they want to call it. I guess variegated actually means one color, sort of like an ombre kind of changing to different colors. but. self-patterning I guess is what it is even though it, there won't be much of a pattern in it I just like it because it's the multi um, color and it, using the multicolor yarn allows me to use up all those odds and in um, yarn balls okay you get the idea I'm gonna go around and do all that and uh, next time you see you I'll probably be doing the variegated uh, or the different multicolored uh, yarn and uh, I'm not going to come back at each stripe. Um, obviously, um, it's going to be a while. And so probably I might come back when I change yarns. And it might be just uh, me doing it until I get to um, the end of the blanket. And then I might be showing you just how to take it off the loom and then do the simulated cuff at the end. Um, 
in order to keep the edges from curling. Because obviously this is just hours and hours of knit, 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 knit. Um, in, in the event that I don't come back with the stripe, I'm just going to join the yarn together by tying a knot like I did in the hat, in the sock stripe, and anywhere else I've changed yarn. Um, and I'll just keep knitting um, until I'm at the end. Okay, it has been about four weeks, and I've been busy loom knitting this afghan. And uh, you can see how we have the orange. This was the start of the blanket. I have the I had orange, and then I did a blue, and then I did the the colored again, and then the pink, and then the variegated again, and then yellow, and now I'm on this. So I have. The rest of this skein, and then I'll probably do either another pink or a turquoise um, stripe, and then another uh, skein of this, and then I'll see why I, I like the length, and um, at that point I'll determine if I want to do, um, if I want to end on a color, which I probably will since I started on a color. Um, but um, I just wanted to check back and let you look at... Um, how it comes out of the loom after you get enough done here and you can see it's just I mean it's an afghan it's long <laughs> and um, so right now it's like um, one, one let's see one two three four five six seven we're on eight skeins right now um, so I just wanted to let you sort of see how it was going. Somebody asked me about the big Shirley Temple back here. I collect Shirley Temples and I restore Shirley Temples. These are all from the 30s. And um, this is my dream Shirley. She's 27 inch. She's the biggest one. Uh, the reason why I could afford her, or Santa Claus brought her to me. The reason why I could afford her is because she's missing an arm. She's like her, she's only got half an arm. Um, so I have to rebuild her arm and she needs some maintenance some grazing and she's got a damage to her head but her wig is in really good condition and i have um, a whole outfit planned out for her um, that i am excited about cutting out and sewing um, so maybe that's another thing i'll show some of my other shirley's um, in another video but people have been asking because she's been sitting back there for a while um, hi Okay, uh, I am back. I have finished the um, afghan for the most part. I haven't taken it off the loom yet because I was going to wait and show you the, how to do that part. I am going to show you how to remove it from the loom and then we're going to finish it off. When you are um, doing your afghan, you want to make sure you reserve some of the yarn at the end. Um, I would say probably a good two yards or more of yarn at the very end um, to take it off the loom with. Because what you have to do you have to go through each of these loops just like when you're doing if you've done the hat and the sock um, the same concept and since this isn't going to be a full-size afghan when we take it off this loom I know it's hard to visualize until you take it off the loom here because uh, it's like in an S sort of shape but so you need to make sure you have enough yarn left to go all, all the way around in each one of these loops. And it's the same exact concept of any, anything else that you're loom knitting as far as how to remove it. Just a little bit more tedious and I was thinking I may have left a little bit too much yarn here but I wanted to have enough. Um, when I go back I'm going to make a cuff out of the bottom because it just uh, keeps it from curling better if you have a cuff on the end of the blanket. There's the empty loom. Now we have not done yet. Just got it off the loom now. So all the edges have been taken off the loom, and you can see the like 
here's like the, the yarn that I just put through all the little loops. Here's the little loops you see them in. There. That's all the all of those were on the on the loom. So now we've taken all of those off. Now want to sort of stretch it out a little bit. The best way to do this is usually to put it down um, on a flatter surface. So, like, so I have it spread out as much as I can do here. And the edge I'm going to go along and I'm just going to sort of like a whip stitch. So I'm just going to sew over the top, around the top all the way across just to secure all of those um, loops that I took off. You see see what I mean about curling here? If you don't, I'm going to make the cuff. So what I'm going to do is going to do that and then I'm going to come back. I'm just going to fold this over just like you would to make a hem. And I'm just going to sew straight st stitch the same yarn all the way across to make like a little cuff. And then we, um, so let me show you doing that and then we'll take a look at um, doing the cuff here. Just going to go through it and sort of like blanket stitch and sew all of these. See, you see all the little loops. So I'm just going to sort of sew. And if you don't know how to do blanket stitch, I have a video on that. But it doesn't matter. I mean, you can just do any old stitch. The idea is you just want to secure this edge because these are all sort of movey because, you know, they move back and forth in there. Um, now I'm just going to um, fold over the top. And just like you would hem something, I am going to um, hem this into a cuff. Remember, because you're using the same yarn, your um, stitches will be, it's going to be very forgiving if you do bigger stitches or you're not as precise as normal. So I'm just going to get back up here where I can start sewing. Okay, and then I'm just going to go across. I'm just going to straight stitch this cuff about, I think I got about an inch and a half. Okay, I finished the hem, and here's the one that I did. Um, I had to take off the loom and then cuff and sew. Here's the original one that we made on the loom, where we actually, you know, cuffed it on the loom. So um, it's a pretty good size afghan, probably the size of a um, a full or a double, whatever you call it, um, size bed comforter and there's what we got and um, took about a month to do um, so um, I think it turned out well I'm happy with it and I hope um, I gave you a little bit of confidence to use the afghan loom it's just like knit, loom knitting anything else it's just bigger and um, when you spread it out it's a it's a full size um, afghan even though it's on that little S-shaped loom and then when you take it off the first time it's always like oh <laughs> because it's so big and, and you you feel like you're not doing something so big another thing I'd like to note that if you want to do baby afghans on their crib size you can just stop count the pegs and, uh, to the halfway point and um, I just like used a little nail and sort of um, dug like a line in there <laughs> just so I know I don't have to go recount every time and if I want to do a that, that's also good for like a lap like a lap throw if you're doing um, for nursing homes or someone in a wheelchair but same same sort of you know um, loom knitting technique that you use with any kind of loom knit knitting um, this has been Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm bye <laughs>